Hey there, everybody. Uh, so here's the video that I promised to talk about the different nuances of the human IK system. So just in terms of control, what I was talking about before was uh, working in either full body or body part mode. There's also a selection mode, but I never use that one at all. I really just use these two. So again, the, the two differences between full body and body part is full body will allow uh, so if you pull on an, the, an end effector for a body part, which be, would be either a, a foot or a hand, uh, the whole body moves with it to try to compensate. Um, the other really important thing is when I hit S, S as in set, to set a key, um, if I'm in full body mode, it's going to set a key on all of the controllers, all of them. If I'm in body part mode, uh, I, when I pull on an end, end effector like the hand, it does not affect the entire body. And also when I hit the S key on the keyboard to set a key, it's only going to set it on that body part, in this case the left arm, not the rest of the body. So typically um, I'll do full body for my extreme poses because then I'll, I'll set keys on everything. And then when I start doing in-betweens, I'll either pose on just the, or key on just the body part or I might even just go to auto key mode, which will only key on something that you change at that particular time. So that's just a, a way to manage some of your keys. Now, a couple other things in here, if you wanna select all of the controllers, you can do that by clicking in an empty area. See, if I click again, it deselects. If I click again, it reselects. So that's another way to make selections. Um, for the most part, you're going to want to just manipulate these nodes here, which correspond to a specific controller. You never want to animate a joint, only the controllers, because we're working with the control rig. Now, the other thing I mentioned is that we can pin body parts by using the two pins here. I can either pin translate, rotate, or both. So, for instance, on the head, if I pin just its rotate, and then I grab the hips and rotate the hips. The, uh, oops, I guess I, did I miss it? Rotate. Oh, I need to be in full body mode also. To use these pins, you need to be in full body mode. Um, so you see now the head stays upright because I told it to not change its translation, pin its translation. Now, if I pin on the head, if I turn off rotate and pin translate, uh, we'll get something, it looks a little funny because the head will not move from where it is. Uh, I could try pulling the hips so you see the head stays in place. So you can pin, rotate or translate for any body part actually, which is really nice. Now the other things I showed during class was how do we add auxiliary pivots? So we can do something like a foot roll. So we do that on the individual body or controller parts again. So. If I select the left foot, right click, I can create a pivot effector, pivot effector. And then I'll hit insert to go in the insert mode. And then I can move that auxiliary effector where I want. I guess I put it on the bottom of the, sh the heel of the shoe there. And then I can create another one for the toe. So I'll just come back to that same controller, right click and do uh, create pivot effector and I'll move that one out towards the toe. Um, and then when I'm done, I can turn insert back off. So now what I'll have is my regular foot controller takes everything with it. Um, but if I select an auxiliary pivot, we typically don't move these. These are gonna be mostly for rotation. So I use my rotate tool and now I can rotate from the heel or I can rotate from the toe. So those are the pivots. That's how we can do foot rolls with this system. Um, and we can leave them in there or remove them. We can add them and remove them as we're animating. They're very dynamic. So if I need to do a foot roll for 30 frames and then I just want to get these out of the way, Maya will remember what you've done with it up to that point. And then you can come over here and then simply just right click again and clear the effectors. Get rid of them altogether. So that's, uh, those are the auxiliary pivots. And then the other one that I showed was the, I did this on one of the hands, 
I added an auxiliary effector, not a pivot, but an auxiliary effector. This essentially gives me another IK handle. So if I create an auxiliary effector there, this hand is always going to reach for that, that auxiliary effector. Um, although it's, what is, it should reach for it there. Oh, maybe, I guess actually, if, if I move the, 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 the center of mass, that doesn't really, notice it doesn't, it doesn't adhere to the, the full body structure that we have when we use these pins here. Um, because actually what this is for, this is for props. Because we can't parent, we can't use a controller as a parent. Um, or vice versa. Or we can't parent a controller to a prop. So that's why we have to create the auxiliary effector. Then I could create my prop. In this case, I'll just make it a, a cube. So I've got this cube here. So I'm just going to sort of put that, actually, let's do this instead. Let me create a sphere and let's make that a little bit larger and I'll just move that into place right here. So let's say the character is going to play basketball or something. <laughs> so there's the ball. So now what I can do is I can either, I can parent this object to the effector um, or I, in most, in most cases, what we're going to use this system for is because we want to, to be able to move the prop and have the body follow. So what I would have to do then is I would want to make this the parent and then the effector that I created the child. So uh, we set up constraints from either the rigging or the animation menu set. It's in either one of these. I'll go to rigging. And I'm looking at the parent constraint here. So the parent constraint, I'm going to tear this off. The parent constraint uh, requires you to choose the parent first, oops, which will be the prop, parent first, then shift select the effector. That's the child. So parent first, then child. Um, under parent here, I just want to make sure that I have maintain offset activated. If I don't, what will happen is the child will try to orient itself to the parent. It'll try to line itself up with the parent's origin, and we don't want that. We want them to maintain the offset distance that they have here. So that's why we turn that on. And I'll hit add. So now when I move the basketball, the hand follows it. So that's the auxiliary effector. And again, when I'm done with those, I can just simply uh, clear them, and that one will go away also. Uh, I think those are the main things that I talked about in class uh, in terms of just basic keying. Um, so the other thing was baking. So I'll go through this here too. Um, so I'm going to do this with the Mixamo character. So I'm just going to make a new scene here and I'm going to go out. I'm going to pause for a second and go out and just grab a character from Mixamo. Actually, just an animation from Mixamo. So I thought I'd just show you what I was doing here. So I just picked out an animation, I hit download, and typically it'll set, be set to download with skin. I don't want the character, I just want the animated joint. So I'm gonna say here without skin. So an FBX without skin, and then I'll hit the download button. And then I can go bring that into Maya and prepare it for use with the uh, human IK system. So it's been downloaded, it's in my downloads here. So I'm gonna to go to File and just import this. Uh, so this will be on my desktop. Nope, sorry, this is actually in Downloads. I didn't take it out of Downloads. There it is. All right, so there's the animation. We can see it there. And so the first thing I need to do is put it into a T-pose so that I can characterize it. Uh, so I'm gonna select, I usually, again, I select the hips, the top joint that's there. Then I need to go to the select menu and make sure I select the entire hierarchy, not just that one joint. I need all of the joints. So that's why I'm doing select hierarchy. Then what I'm gonna do is come over to the channel box and I'm just going to click and drag over the rotate X, Y, Z. Even though they're set to zero, you can see up here these three dots. That means that I have more than one joint selected or more than one object. So it's really only, it can only show us 
the translate attributes for one object, which in this case is probably the hips that are zeroed out, but all these other joints are not. So by doing select hierarchy, then coming over here and clicking and dragging over the rotates, I'm basically, and then I need to type in zero again. Now when I hit enter, it's actually gonna zero out all of the joints, but only temporarily. If I move my playback head, they'll reset themselves. So this is only temporary. So I only need it in this, this pose temporarily until I get the control rig created. So now that I have them zeroed out, I'm gonna come over here to the human IK window right here. We should see it, it's this one. And I need to create my character definition first. That's basically the name, the meta tag name for this, this character. Um, so it's just called character one, which I don't recommend keeping. We always wanna rename them. So I'll go here and rename it. And I'll just call it, um, uh, I, I don't know, I'll, just, I'll, call, I'll say this is character one, whatever this character might be. I'll say okay. So now I've created my character. Now I need to associate the joints with um, the character definition. So again, I'm just gonna select, I can actually select any joint on the body, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna go to the, uh, the little menu button here again. And now I'm gonna do edit character definition, and this is being cut off, but I'm gonna choose this one here called load character definition template. And I don't need to do anything in here. I'm gonna go with the default HIK, that's human IK. And I'll say okay. And everything should turn green because the naming convention on Mixamo's rig is identical to human IK and that was by design. Because also Human IK is, it actually originated in Motion Builder and then it was ported over to Maya. And Motion Builder is the de facto motion capture, motion editing tool for um, production. And if you're interested in that, you'll get that in the um, uh, mocap class, which hopefully will be running sometime next year. All right, so uh, once I do this, then I need to generate my control rig. So the next thing I'll do is, is um, put a control rig on the character. And now I need to then go back to the joints because the, remember the joints are the ones that have the animation. Now when I go back to the joints, and going back to the joints simply means changing the source from control rig to none, uh, it's gonna go back to its pose and that's fine because we've already created the control rig. So now what I need to do is go here, go to the menu again, and do bake to control rig. That's what it's saying here, bake to control rig. And again, this is just a, a Maya bug. Maya has lots of bugs because of its old architecture. Um, what we need to do, I don't see the control rig, so what I, I found I, I typically have to do is come in here to the menu again, go to edit control rig, and go to the rig look and just switch the rig look. So if I tear this menu off, uh, uh, okay, and let's put it right here. Rig look, see if I go wire, it shows up. Then if I go back to sticks, it's fine. So these are basically our three, three looks, either wire, sticks, or box. And now you can see that animation has been baked onto the control rig and now I can continue editing this animation if I wanted to. And I could do that with animation layers, which we have in the channel box. So here's my, here are my animation layers. And if, uh, if I wanted to, because we can't animate on this base layer now because of all the keys. And that's typical of motion capture data. So basically what we do is we would uh, select all of our controls, because I want to take all the controls to a new animation layer. Then in here, uh, make sure you're in anim and not display. In anim layers, with all my controls selected, I'll click this button which says create animation from selection or create layer from selection. Now I have a new anim layer. Notice the base layer, lots of keys. The anim layer, no keys. So now I can start doing offsets to this character. You know, Maybe I want this character's arms to really be out to the side while they're doing their animation. So I will uh, set a key on that, grab this arm over here. Let me go back to human IK. What am I, I'm doing full body keys anyway, that's okay. 
put the arm out here, set a key on it. Now the character, oops, I must have missed the key on that one. Did I not key it? Set key. Why does that one keep snapping back? That's weird. That shouldn't happen. Hmm. Out to the side. And again, I'm setting a key. It says it set the key, and it snaps back. Oh, Maya. Jeez. Uh, actually, when I use Human IK, I never work in Maya. I always work in Motion Builder. Motion Builder is way more powerful than Maya. Um, but you get the idea there. Um, again, I'm not sure why that one arm is not behaving properly. Did I not get that one arm on this animation layer? I think I did. Add selected objects. That one should be there. Keep snapping back. What if I put on auto key? What happens then? Oh, now it worked. Yep, I think it was another, I think that was another Maya bug. Again, uh, as I told a lot of classes, Maya apparently is built on old architecture. And uh, as they try to continue to update Maya without being able to fully update the architecture, um, it generates a lot of bugs. So that's one of the pitfalls of Maya. Um, so there you see, I've added those offsets. So that was the, the basic process. Now, if I wanted, the other thing I had shown in class was how to take this and apply it to a different character. So I could go ahead and do that too. Now I need to save this file first. So I'll do save scene as, and I'll put this on the desktop. I'll just call it, um, I'll just call it mocap. And then I, like I said in class, I put a CR. So I know that there's actually a control rig already applied to this animation then that means I can use it for other characters that have control rigs. So I'll save that. And now I'm just gonna create a new file and I'm gonna to go to the um, content browser here and just grab one of those other human IK characters. I'll, I'll grab this one here. And there's my character with their human IK rig. And if I go to human IK, we can see there's their control rig. So now what I can do is go to the file menu and import that control rig scene that I had right there, mocap underscore CR. And there we can see there's, there's that animation right there, even with the offset that I did on the animation layers. And then I can tell my Kumar character here to use the other control rig. Oops, I changed, sorry, I changed, that's, I changed the character definition. I, I, I want to change the source. So I want to use the mocap CR's control rig. There we go. And now he's going to walk and do everything that that mocap file does. And then what I can do is just bake this to the control rig. So I can do bake to control rig. In this case, I'm on the control rig level, but it's still giving me the option to bake to control rig because there are two control rigs here. So basically we can bake from joints to control rigs, from control rigs to joints, but if we have multiple control rigs, we can now bake from control rig to control rig. So I'm gonna say, yes, bake to this character's control rig, which is this one. So let's see, a mocap, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna go bake to control rig. And now you can see I am on, I now have Kumar's control rig um, and the animation from this control rig has now been baked to this one. And in, at this point I can actually remove the original human IK mocap information and now I'm just left with this new character, their control rig, and that mocap animation baked onto it. So I think that's everything I covered in class. So I'll post this out there for everybody and uh, let me know if you have any questions and hopefully that will give you a little deeper understanding of how human IK works.